up YouTube? Hey guys, it's early. We out here. What better what better thing to do than to go out here fishing? You guys missed the fog. We got here a little early. It was fog coming off the water. We actually got here before the cattle got in. So we've had a few fish blow up on us and we had one break off guys. But uh, we're just gonna go ahead and show you guys. If you want to go out here and fish early, I mean, early August, late July, you gotta get out here before that sun gets up. Cause guys, it's, a, it's nearly a hundred degrees by like 10 o'clock. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, flip some grass. We're gonna try a few different things today. It's not gonna be a specific video on any just specific pattern but we're just gonna throw some baits out there really killer around this time of year and uh we're just gonna have some fun guys y'all stay tuned we're gonna try to get y'all some action clips like some cash to catch things so uh just stay tuned let's see what we get on to So much going on right here. There's so much going on in this little area. As you guys can see, we got a little trail here. I just hooked a snake earlier. Right here, guys. He bit on. He bit on to my little swim jig. As y'all can see, we got a lot going on. It's real calm out. Not much wind. I'm expecting the wind to probably pick up around 9, 10 o'clock. Right now, we're just going to enjoy this right here. Beautiful. Still going to start off slow, guys. A lot of times, I know y'all think early morning, y'all like top water, which it's cool. If I'm going to do top water when it's hot like this, I'm not going to crank a buzz bait out just right. I mean, just first thing in the morning, I'll probably throw a frog out and see how they're acting towards it. And I'll let them tell me how aggressive they're gonna be if I'm gonna do a top water early morning. But I like to start off just like I would do any other time. I like to start off slow. Cause yeah, remember them fish, they're not getting much. I mean, the temperature's not cooling off that much at night. We're waking up to 80 degrees, guys. So that water's still hot. But with it being low light, I know they don't mind hunting things. So I'd probably throw a frog or a popper something a little more stationary than a bug bait. If I'm gonna do a top water. Right now we're just flipping our creature bait. Cause on the way in, we seen some dead crawfish shells. I mean, we seen the, the hole in the pinchers. So we're basically just trying to imitate that. Cause we know that rain we had a couple days ago had the crawls moving a lot. And I know when you catch a lot of bass out of here, they're usually full of crawfish and bluegill. So I always think about that too when I'm out here. Oh, that one's a little one. He took off. Found that stick out there. signals but you got to try it out it's all about trial, trial and error because the few fish we seen that are active were really really big Pick up a spinner bait. I'll pick up a 
spinner bait guys. Something that we can slow roll across that grass. See if we can get them like that. If not, we'll go ahead and swim jig. We can control the tempo on that as well. huge but he's a good one give us a clue right there guys that's a clue right. number two all right so we got our clue he definitely want a spinner bait didn't he <laughs> you got two different classes of fish guys I say class because I'm talking about schools. You got two different schools that's going on in the summer, guys. You got your, your fish are gonna go for that shallow cover, like your reeds, your grass mats, stumps, etc. They're gonna get they're gonna get out there and stay shallow, feed off crawls, bluegill, and shad that are available. But then you're gonna also have a school that's gonna follow the shad and everything else out to the deep water because they're trying to find that cooler water in the summer. The other school, school number two gonna be where you have majority majority of the big fish that are schooling up because they're gonna find somewhere where it's low light perfect water temperature for them and there's gonna be an abundance of bait because baits are really really sensitive to that heat just like they're sensitive to the cold weather guys so when you you recognize what school you're gonna go for you figure out what school you're chasing if you're chasing the big schools they're gonna be you know bait abundant around there they're going to be easier to catch and they're probably going to see less pressure unless you're in a lake where there's a lot of you know forward face of sonar which guys i don't ever look for my channel to knock or condone anything like that but i'm just saying it's just reality of fishing when you, you tune into my channel i'm just gonna give you the realities of fishing guys but uh if you got a you got a lake that's heavily pressured with like newer boats and uh Season, seasoned fishermen, you're gonna see some of them uh, offshore fish getting pressured. They're still gonna be easier to catch because you got a lot of bait out there. Them guys, they can't decipher what's real and what's not just off a few fish, I mean, a few of them being caught. So uh, my thing to you is figure out what you're gonna do in the summer. Have a plan. Because 90% of the time when you go out there and you're just like, I'm just gonna go fish, you're gonna get skunked out there in the summer. You gotta have a plan. You gotta go out there thinking, this is what I'm targeting today. And get the patterns that you know they're gonna eat in that area. If you know the shad out deep, go get you a 6XD or something that's, uh, or some deep diving crank or deep diving jerk bait that's gonna mimic that forage. If you're gonna stay shallow, mimic some bluegills, mimic your crawfish, or mimic small thread fin that might be caught off in the uh, shallow water trying to find shade in the grass, guys. Make sure you make smart decisions in the summer, you won't get skunked. All right, guys, we're gonna move on down. Y'all stay tuned. Seen it and didn't want it, want no parts of it. See, that might be an indicator that I might need to throw a swim jig. When they're starting to do that, it might be an indicator. All right, guys, when you're throwing a spinner bait or a chatter bait and you see fish and they're starting to like swirl around, around the bank, if you throw over there and you don't immediately just hit it or at least turn around to look at it, you might you might want something with less less vi vibration on it something subtle so a worm or even a swim jig because you might want the same style of, of bait like that crawl trailer or that shad trailer but he might want it with something without the blades just kicking all in his face because a lot of times man that subtle bite it'll get it going i mean that subtle bait will get that bite going that's why that swim jig is the perfect thing to pair up with your spinner baits and your chatter baits. Because you can kind of take the guesswork out of everything with that. Because you're covering everything. You, you're around grass, throw that chatter bait. You got a, uh, a reed line like this and open water, throw that spinner bait. But if you got a little bit of both or a little more grass than expected, that swim jig would be perfect.
we're venturing out towards the middle, guys. We're seeing a lot of bait fish zoom in and out the middle. So I'm gonna kind of kind of probe the bottom out there with this center bait, see if we can get bit. Sun's starting to get up, starting to get warmer. So the bite's starting to slow down a little bit on the moving bait. We've had five bites already, and we've probably been here 30 minutes. You see all the pollen, all the pollen on this pond, though. I always heard with a lot of pollen, they always talk about the oxygen in the water. Well, these bass here are pretty healthy, the ones I've seen, and they're still aggressive. So I'm starting to wonder how much effect does the pollen on this specific this specific body of water affect the, the activity of these bass? Because you always think of like a room full of dust. When you walk in a room full of dust, it's usually harder to breathe. You don't move as fast. But in ponds like this, sometimes I've noticed even with the pollen on top, the bass are really, really aggressive. Some of the ponds like that are some of your best topwater ponds. So it's kind of a kind of a catch-22. You kind of don't know if it's slowing them down or what. But I just experiment. I just experiment a lot. I experiment as much as possible on stuff like that. So I can see what works for me and the body of water I'm on. That's another thing, guys. You need to break down your body of water. Oh, there's a bass right there. All right, guys, you got one in the middle chasing bluegill. But break down your body of water, guys. Get good on that. And then start working your way around other places. I mean, I ain't saying don't visit them other places, but really study on the places that you really fish and really get in tune with the bass there because then that way they'll relate somewhere else to somewhere else trust me there's always a common denominator with most bodies of water whether it be grass wood or like you got structure like this reeds around oh misty but there's gonna be something to make that place relatable to other bodies of water so just break that down and learn how the bass react on your body of water. Then start worrying about conquering the world after that. Yeah. I thought I missed him. Damn. outside we're out here chasing perch eaters <laughs> so we got a little yozuri that's a little golden golden perch color and as you can see the water's the water clarity went down since the last time we were out here so we got a lot of murky water going on right now right after the rain so what i'm doing is i'm working the stumps around here there's some underwater stumps over here i'm just cranking that litmus crank right around them stumps Trying to get it done. One thing I can tell you about that lifting crank, you're just cranking it in, you're not working that thing right. I always like to give it a little pull, quick little pulses. Just like that. Kind of drag that sucker along. 
You don't have to go crazy erratic with it. Just quick little drag. Just like that. That bait looks like it's being elusive. Quick little drag. Get right around these stumps. Oh, that was close to the bank. It's to go too fast. And right now I got to set. Oh, he came off. No, he didn't. He came towards me. Oh, he came off. It's like a big crop in here first. It's a little bad. There he is. We're asking for that. All right, back in action. You know they're on the wood. There he is. And that's a good one. You know they're on the wood, guys. That's a good one. Unless I got a hook money. Oh, we got a stuff on this. There he is. There he is. That's a good one. Alright guys. This guy flipped off as you all can see. We'll go ahead and get him back in there. Get a little something going. Alright guys, they're in that cover. There's some underwater stumps down there, like, I mean, some serious stumps. You got to be real careful, guys, because you can get hung up in this stuff easily. Real easy. And that's where they're at. They're sitting. Another one. Right inside there. I can only see the silhouette of the stump. So when I'm doing, I'm running that lip lip right in between the two. Because you got one right outside of here. Then one just on the other side of that bank. And I'm running my lift right between both of them. But I'm ripping it as it goes through. And they're catching me right when I get past it. They're catching me. Like that right there. Oh, I just lost him. The only bad part about it is around this time of year, with all the water getting shallow. Oh, he's doing like a hit? Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's either a hook issue or my rod might be a little too giving. What we're going to do is we're going to slow this down. See what we can do about that because we got multiple hits on that same area. So that shows me that's cooled up there. Amber. I'm kind of testing to see if I'm getting the bottom or I'm going to get in the grass. So what I'm doing now, now that I know I can go a little slower, let's see if I can let him eat it. I'm going to eat it. Oh, I'm going to hear smoking out of here. It's got a little bit of chop on that water. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys hear gold, and the first thing y'all think is cloudy weather. Let me tell you something. Gold is the gold in the world. It's just as good as silver some days in the summer when you're fishing murkier water. They still see that flash and see I got a little bit of orange on there. So it's lighting it up. So you can see as it's been getting chewed on, you see the paint kind of coming off. But yeah guys, we're working, working that gold in that murky water. A lot of you spinnerbait fishermen already know about that though. You guys know when it's choppy and it's murky water, you can throw them gold blades in there. Makes some magic. I'm wondering if I hit that same fish because I done went through there and not once. And if I hit anything else or the stump. But we do know this time of year the main forage is bluegill. Bluegill, green air, sunfish, whatever you want to call them, brim, that's what they're eating. They're eating bigger meals when they're up shallow because they got a lot of cover shallow. Because out of the two schools of fish, you know that one's shallow are going to make sure they're nearby some cover, whether it's through logs that's underwater or a grass mat.
switched up the tactics. All right, guys. Squished up with a chatterbait. Flip this uh, bite, went down a little bit. Went in, took my Z-Man chatterbait. But look what I did, guys. I keep telling you guys, y'all that come into my store, man, the Bass Pro, I tell you, that blade minnow kicks butt, guys. Look at this fish. It's 100 degrees out here. Y'all can see my face. I'm sweating, keeping that sun off me. But this is what it does. Mikey. Donkey's on the chatter bait, baby. Another four pound today. Hey, here we go, guys. Look at that Volker, guys. Another four pounder. Another four pounder, guys. All right, guys. Zero dollar scale. I'm gonna go ahead and get a weight on this girl. Should've got a weight on the other ones. But, got enough of these si a size bass to know they're caught. Yes. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Lock it in, lock it in. Okay, 396. 396 guys. 396. He's flat. I'm hunting the flat right now. Took a couple casts out in the out in the deep. But I'm trying to work these uh flat grass beds over here. I call them flat grass beds, but they're really shallow. And I mean they have a very, very small drop off towards the middle. Try to see if we can get hooked up on it. That's how you do it. As you see, we've been ripping the lipless through the grass. See what we got. We got the Yozuri rattling vibe. The one knocker. I know you guys are used to throwing a one knocker in the winter, but it's also crucial in the summer, as you can see. I mean, they get lethargic in the summer. All right, guys, we had a long day. It's hot. <laughs> tired we woke up at four this morning guys to get this video done for you guys so uh with that said man we need you guys to like share subscribe i mean guys we are going to go to the coldest of the coldest rainiest of the rainiest stormiest of the stormiest whatever y'all want to call it to get you guys these videos we want to keep cranking out tips for you guys and keep getting y'all content something to give you something to watch on youtube guys and if you're local Hey, we're representing you guys. We're out here trying to keep it professional. So you guys is up and coming. You can kind of get a good look at and a good glimpse of what the future could be like for us as a state and everything else, guys. So uh, with that said, man, uh, we're going to go ahead and sign out. And I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you tune in. We'll keep dropping these bombs. And uh, like I always say, man, keep fishing, man. Don't ever stop fishing and keep believing. Peace.